welcome everyone to the presentation on the medicinal qualities of garlic. Give me a minute to share my screen. All right, the medicinal qualities of garlic. And I based this on the Be Your Own Doctor book. Um, it really surprised me all the things that garlic, I knew garlic was really good, but I didn't realize all the things that it can be used for. So this gives a lot of uses and I am quoting directly from the book. So, you know, none of this is meant to replace the medical advice you get from your doctor. It's simply an educational tool um, so you can take the the information and use it how you will so garlic is considered the natural antibiotic they actually used it um, until 1942 when penicillin was made doctors routinely used garlic to kill virus bacteria and fungus garlic formed the principal ingredient in the four thieves vinegar which was used so successfully and Marcel's for protection against the plague when it prevailed there in 1722. Uh, some of the things that it can be used for is for high blood pressure, colds and coughs, pneumonia, fungal infections, high blood sugar, bacterial infections. Um, it stops bruising, which I did not realize that. Helps boost the immune system and it can also be used as a parasite cleanse. So it's really easy to use. Um, you chop or grate it and let it sit for 10 minutes. It really allows the, the active properties to release. And then you can you swallow it without chewing. Um, you can add a little bit of honey to make it more palatable. If you have kids that won't take it that way because of the taste, it can also be applied topically. Um, the finer that the chopping and more intensive the crushing, uh, the more allicin is released. So there's two main medicinal ingredients which produce the benefits of garlic, allicin and dialyl sulfides. So the allicin, like I said, is produced when it's finely chopped or crushed and the active properties of the garlic depend on an essential oil, which may be obtained by distillation with water. Allison does not occur in ordinary garlic. Um, so it, it's not gonna, like I said, it's, it's released when that is crushed or chopped. I looked up the allyl, dial, dial, I'm going to butcher this. No, I'm not, because I wrote it down how to pronounce it. Dialyl sulfides. Um, and there are a lot of, uh, you can just Google it, and there's a lot of information on that. It's actually uh, present in the onion family, in all the onion family. The oil is rich in sulfur, but contains no oxygen. So just a little overview of how it works. A, a bulb of garlic has four to 16 or more cloves. And so in each of these cloves are cells, um, which contain allicin, alanase, and sulfenic acid. So in separate cells, an enzyme is called alanase resides. So when the cellular walls are damaged. So in, during crushing, um, some of the enzyme comes into contact with the amino acid and then this sets off a chemical reaction that causes sulfenic acid to form instantly. But sulfenic acid is unstable and it reacts with itself and breaks down at a steady rate into another unstable compound called allicin, which has a strong antibiotic property. So long story short, in summary, you need to crush it to really get the benefits of it.
not always though, because I was reading that um, for like an earache, you can actually just take a clove and dip it in olive oil and put it in the ear and cover it with warm, like a warm sock. And that heat will help release the, the benefits of the garlic to help reduce the um, discomfort in the ear. Studies by competent multi-degreed multi scientists have shown beyond any reasonable doubt that consuming garlic generally has the following physical effects. Um, so I wrote them, kind of highlighted those uh, different things that it helps with, helps lower blood pressure and LDL cholesterol, helps reduce plaque buildup within the arterial system, uh, one study showed that this effect to be greater in women than in men can help lower and regulate blood sugar, helps to prevent blood clots from forming, um, thus reducing the possibility of strokes and thrombosis. It says he hemophiliacs should not use garlic. I had to look that up because <laughs> I wasn't sure what that meant. Um, it's actually hemophilia is a rare disorder where the blood does not clot normally happens um, because the body does not make enough of a protein called the clotting factor. So some examples might include uh, those who have excessive bruising or a lot of nosebleeds, frequent nosebleeds things like that. So they should not use garlic. Uh, helps to prevent cancer, especially of the digestive system and prevents growth and reduces the size of certain tumors. It may help to remove heavy metals such as lead and mercury from the body. I didn't realize that either. Raw garlic is a potent natural antibiotic that works differently from modern antibiotics and kills some strains of bacteria like staph that have become immune or resistant to modern antibiotics and it has antifungal and antibacterial properties. Some DIYs for those of us that like to make our own and I know Casey has um, has experience with using garlic like a garlic oil for an ear infection. And Casey, if you want to unmute and share that. Uh, yeah, actually. Um, so antibiotic, I don't know if I can't see myself on here, but if you can see me, this is my antibiotic. So I, what I did was I just peeled the cloves and then you cover it with unfiltered raw honey and so you pretty much, you have to burp it. You, you put it on upside down, you take it up every day and you burp it. And once those little bubbles are gone, that's how you know it's ready. You pretty much, you can drink the syrup. It's actually surprisingly very good. Um, <laughs> garlic and honey, you would never think that, but yeah, it's actually really good. Again, I never get sick. My job, everybody around me has, I have yet to. Um, and then the other thing with the garlic, I'm trying to find my book. So this is kind of what catapulted me was my, I guess he was 18 months at the time we were in Italy. And so getting to the doctor was kind of just not happening. And so he had a really bad ear infection and it was steeping garlic in olive oil for a couple hours. Then you add lavender a couple of drops of lavender and a couple of drops of tea tree or melaleuca and you dip the cotton ball and then i would just put the cotton ball in the ear put like something over overnight and to keep it in there and i mean his fever was gone all the gunk that was running out of his ears stopped never had to put him on antibiotics i healed him himself he is now 10 years old and he has yet to have another one so wow. garlic is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so when you said that in the, when you put it in the jar with the honey, did you 
crush it or is that just cloves? Nope. Nope. Just whole cloves. Now, really? when I do like my meals and stuff, I do cut and mince the garlic and I leave it sitting for about 20 minutes before I do anything else with it. Because like you said, it takes that time to activate the components inside. So yeah, that was yep. pretty cool. I didn't realize that before. Right. So, okay. So how long do you leave the, you said you leave that in the jar with the honey and you burp it. takes it. about two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then how do you take it? You just take like a spoonful at a time. So if you want to, you can take just like a spoonful of like the honey, just the honey itself, or you can just eat one of the cloves, like one a day, just eat a clove or two, <laughs> um, just whenever. But I mean, the whole entire thing you can use. So yeah, I mean, sometimes I'll do the, I don't want to chew on anything. So I just do the honey. Yeah. Or you can drizzle honey in like a sauce or over bread. Like, I mean, it's very versatile. Apologies. That would be a little man. <laughs> I don't know if you can see him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So do you have any thoughts? Cause she doesn't say in the book, like how long this stuff lasts. Um, what do you mean? Okay. Well, like the garlic salve, it does say to refrigerate it. Um, so I've had this in my cabinet and honey, there is no expiration date. Honey okay. does not go bad ever. Um, so that's pretty much like a preservative for the garlic. Okay. So, I mean, now if your garlic starts like turn black or like dark brown, I think, you know, he'd yeah. caution with that. <laughs> but, um, but other than that, uh, if you're using it consistently, you shouldn't have to throw anything out or before it were to go bad. But so far, I have not heard of that happening. Okay. Well, and I was thinking in that super duper tonic that she had the, probably the ginger and the cayenne would help um, preserve it. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Well, thank you very much, Casey. You're welcome. And I, I do want to add, because I want to make sure and throw this in there too with these DIYs. So like this first recipe with the super duper tonic that has, calls for cayenne and you're using equal parts of all these ingredients. It does say so that, that the cayenne is going to make it pretty hot. So if you are a little sensitive to <laughs> spicy foods like I am, uh, you can reduce the amount of cayenne that you use. Um, so just be aware of that. And I thought there was something else I was going to comment on. Oh, with the garlic salve, um, if you're using that on little ones and you see that uh, there's that the skin maybe gets a little red. Um, she actually says if the salve causes a rash, dilute with more coconut and olive oil. Your child may have sensitive skin and this should help. There's an occasional baby who cannot tolerate this out anywhere but on the soles of his feet. So, especially for really young kiddos, like, you know, less than a year old, I would probably start with the feet first anyway with, with like the salve. Susan, go ahead. Um, I did this years ago where I would just take garlic because I've always known the... Um, benefits of it but you're going to be smelling like garlic if you <laughs> do that and you go to work people are going to say i smell garlic it, it even happened when i took garlic supplements yeah so <laughs> you're going to smell like garlic because it comes through your pores it does Absolutely. yeah and my other question is um where do you find really good garlic i'm sure it's not in the grocery store you want something that um that's not farm raised or raised in a lab I mean where do you find good garlic yeah so I I purchased mine off of that azurestandard.com um they have a good source for it I I read <laughs> once about and I shop a lot at Aldi but after I read this how they Aldi gets theirs from China yeah, um, the yeah. stuff I've seen, and they actually raise it in like sewer water, and then Ugh. it's disgusting. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah you want to try to find a 
organic, local, if possible, source. You know, it's not that hard to raise garlic, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that I can type that in the chat. Yeah. Uh, where, where I usually get it from. Um, and then some resources. I'm sorry, Susan, were you finished? Yes, yes, sorry. Okay. Uh, I have, I purchased this book at one of the bulk food stores around here. It was an Amish food store. It's also available on Amazon. And mm -hmm. she says in the book, if you cannot take raw garlic, try Nutramedical.com. Um, you can order, order it mm -hmm. there. It's called Alamax, which is stronger and more cost effective than most processed garlic. I'm going to stop share so I can grab that link. And there's some stories in here too about um, using garlic salve to keep a three month old baby out of the hospital. The baby had contracted yeah. pneumonia. Um, so she faithfully applied garlic salve liberally on the chest, the back and the soles of the feet four times a day. And the pneumonia cleared up quickly. And that it's just like anything else natural. If you want results, you have to be consistent. And, you know, the thing with natural products is it's not a one and done. It's typically, you know, multiple times a day, sometimes five or more times a day, depending on what it is that you're working on. Um, there was also a story about garlic for abscesses. So her 12 year old daughter had a bad tooth abscess and so they used, um, fresh raw garlic instead of pills. So the daughter did not care for the taste. So what she did was she toasted a slice of bread and spread it lightly with cream cheese and then topped it with two cloves of chopped fresh garlic. Pulled it over and she ate it. Um, she was drinking clove tea and taking a thousand milligrams of vitamin C. She, uh, they gave her another slice of toast and more vitamin C in an hour and the pain really improved. And then she kept doing that every two hours for about three more bread slices and the pain was gone and the abscess was nearly gone. Uh, they ended up not even needing to go to the dentist then on Monday. So I thought that was pretty incredible. All right. I'm putting the link for the website, azurestandard.com. Um, if they, they, what they do is they do local drops, local deliveries, um, maybe in your area. I've been surprised at some of the areas they go to. They come here to Clarksville once a month. So on some of the stuff, you do have to really plan ahead. However, they do have a shipping option. So if you're getting something light in weight, like garlic, um, it doesn't cost a lot to ship. So you don't have to wait, you know, for the end of the month or whenever they do their drop. And that is pretty much, make sure I didn't miss anything super important that I wanted you guys to know about. That super duper tonic recipe uh, is really great for the immune system. Uh, if you feel yourself coming down with anything, it's, it's good to take. And again, not just a one and done, probably want to take it multiple times a day. Um, She says that I find you must take garlic every two hours or oftener for serious problems like abscesses or bacterial infections. So just kind of an FYI on that. Does anyone have any questions? I've, I've got one for, for Casey. Um, how long did you steep the the uh, garlic for ear infection? My mom's got one right now. About two um, to three hours on very, very low heat. 
Okay. So I put it in a, a glass jar and I put that glass jar into my saucepan that had the water in it, almost like a double broiler kind of thing. Okay. So that way it doesn't ever get above boiling. I got you. No, absolutely not. Right. Yeah. Cause cool. that'll cook That's out all the one. enzymes and uh, healing right. properties. Okay. Good yep. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. The other thing you can do, Ernie, if you want something while that's going on, while you're making that, um, she does say that you can dip a peeled, unnicked clove of garlic in olive oil and insert it into the opening of the ear canal. Cover the ear with a warm rice sock. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try. Um, my sister was just talking about uh, lavender oil um, today with my mom for relieving the pain and it's it's from the shingles it, it guess it came back and uh and then so when she when casey mentioned the lavender oil and the tea tree oil which i know is like antiviral and antibacterial so that i i really want to try that with her and not let her get discouraged on anything else so i'm gonna go ahead and try that Thank you, though. You're welcome.